Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie and today I'm going to be giving you my May wrap up. I read eight books in the month of May and I participated in Mental Healthathon. If you want to know more of my in-depth thoughts on the books that I read during that readathon, I do have a month-long vlog up on my channel but it's not actually that long so if you want to check it out it has more of my in-depth thoughts as I was reading those books. The first book that I finished is Highly Illogical Behavior by John Corey Whaley. This is a story about this teenage boy who has agoraphobia and a teenage girl who makes it her mission to try and fix him. She does it for an essay to get into college so she befriends this boy with hidden agenda but as they actually start to get to know each other they really do become friends and the story goes off from there. This book also has LGBTQ plus representation if that's something that you're interested in. Although I don't have agoraphobia or panic disorder, I felt like this book represented mental illness well. I did have some issues with the characters and their relationships because just some of the things that happen in this book are morally wrong, which kind of affected my enjoyment of the story, but I did like the story nonetheless. Next, I finished The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky, and this is a story about this teenage boy who has PTSD and anxiety and depression, and it's all about him finding himself as he goes through high school and he meets some new friends that kind of bring him out of his shell and it is a coming of age story and I this is the first time I've ever read this book I know shocker but I didn't really care for it that much it was just kind of okay it wasn't particularly interesting to me it was okay but I wouldn't say that I liked it next I finished The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne this is a World War II novel following this young boy and his family as they up and move because his father has a new position in the military and unbeknownst to the main character his dad is actually the commander of Auschwitz which if you don't know Auschwitz was a very prominent death camp in Nazi Germany during the Holocaust. And the little boy, he is very adventurous and now that he has moved, he doesn't have anyone to play with. He doesn't have anyone to go on adventures with. He's all by himself. There's no other children around. But he can look out his window in the distance and he can see this large mass of people and they're surrounded by this fence and they never leave and he decides that he's going to go explore and he makes his way through the woods goes up to the fence and ends up meeting this little Jewish boy and they become friends. This is not my first time reading this book. I loved it the first time. I still loved it this time. I really do think it is an important read, especially if you're interested in the Holocaust or World War II. This is a book you need to read. Next, I read Speak by Lori House Anderson. This is a young adult novel following this teenage girl who was raped and then she basically gets ostracized from all of her peers, all of her friends. She was at a party when she was raped and there was of course underage drinking and a lot of illegal behavior. And so when she called the police, the party was busted and everyone in the high school hates her. She's very lonely and she is struggling with PTSD from her abuse. This book is supposed to focus heavily on mental health and PTSD, which it does focus on PTSD, but I found that the representation wasn't very clear and nothing was really talked about as far as her mental illness until the end of the book. I made it halfway through and there still was no mention of her PTSD. There was still no mention of her abuse. This book was mostly about her trying to navigate high school as the person everyone hates. No one understands why she did this and she doesn't feel like she can speak up about what happened to her. And this book essentially is supposed to inspire people who are abuse victims or who are struggling. It's to inspire them to speak up. As you can guess, the main character finally finds her voice. And I did really like this book. It just wasn't what I was expecting. Next, I read I Have Lost My Way by Gail Foreman. This is a story about these three characters. One is Indian American. One is half African, half white American. And I believe the other 
other one is white American. And there's also LGBTQ plus representation in this book as well. The main female character is a semi-famous music star, but unfortunately, unbeknownst to the public, she has lost her voice. She's in the middle of recording her big album that everyone is excited for, and no one knows that she lost her voice. She is very upset because she feels like her career is over. She doesn't know she'll ever get her voice back. Another character is struggling with the fact that he is gay, and he does not feel like he can come out to his family, although his family is trying to arrange a marriage for him and he's about to have to leave the country. And then the other character has some family issues at home that aren't revealed until the end of the story and he has some mental health issues that I'm not going to discuss because it's a spoiler. Through an accident in the park all three of these characters meet and they end up having to go on this long journey throughout the day and they become friends and they help each other work through each of their individual issues and I really enjoyed this book. Honestly, it was better than I expected and I'm very glad that I read it. I wouldn't say it's like super great but I think the fact that I was going in with low expectations made it more enjoyable for me. Next I read Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. This is kind of a dystopian novel. It's set in like a futuristic United States. This is a very political book which I wasn't really expecting. It covers a lot of heavy social topics which I was not expecting. Based off of the title I just expected it to be this fun book but while it was very fun and very funny it did deal with a lot of heavy topics which I appreciated. This book follows this group of teenage beauty queens. They're participating in a national pageant and they are all on a plane together which crashes and ends up on this supposedly deserted island. Many of them died in the crash but there's actually roughly a dozen that survived and they know nothing about surviving on an island. Instead of focusing on survival, they actually focus on continuing to prepare themselves for the pageant because they want to win. So they're not even worried about their safety and it adds a lot of humor to the story. There is a lot of crazy things that happen in this book. It was such a wild ride. It was very fun, very enjoyable, but my biggest complaint is that it is way too long. This book could have almost been shortened, cut in half maybe? Like, it was just way too long. There were so many things happening in this book it was kind of hard to keep up, but I did find it very fun and I enjoyed it. Next, I read The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks. I'm kind of trying to slowly make my way through my Nicholas Sparks collection because I own almost all of his books and I haven't read hardly any of them. So I'm trying to make my way through and I decided to actually listen to the audiobook for this one. And it was okay. It's not nearly as good as the movie and it differs a lot from the movie. The movie has so much more content compared to the book and I like the content of the movie better than the book and the romantic relationship in the book isn't nearly as fun as the movie. And lastly I read Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. This is Neil Gaiman's collection of Norse mythology. <laughs> wow. All of these stories are Neil Gaiman's interpretation of Norse myths and I really enjoy this. Some of them I kind of like zoned out in and I don't remember, but some of the stories were very enjoyable and I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot and I made connections between this book and Rick Riordan's Magnus Chase series, which focuses on Norse mythology. Some of the stories in Rick Riordan's books are actually just retellings of Norse myths, which I didn't know. I listened to this audiobook as well, and I really liked listening to the stories. It was very convenient. All right, those are all the books I read slash listened to in the month of May. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts were on them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more bookish content by me. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.